Hey, hey guys, what's up? Uh, welcome to Winnebox number 20 Top Cut Replays. We're doing the top eight and the top four. I will not do the finals because that belongs to Rook's YouTube channel and we're gonna keep it there. I'm not here to steal someone's content. So let's let's go, let's do this. All right, so we're starting with Sofa Court, who actually, completely coincidentally, is here on commentary. Hello. And Slash Revolver. So let's go see what happened. The first top eight match. Amazing. All right, obviously we see a moth deck here at the top, unless it's some crazy hidden parasite thing. And Spellproof Armor at, I mean, at the bottom we see moth, at the top we see Spellproof Armor. I got it right. I figured it out. I'm smart. All right. Good old Colossalus. Can be hit with Parasite, but it can be banished with the DD Warrior Lady. Two Book of Moons in the open. Which does nothing against your opponent's monsters. Mm -hmm. The Battle Step Parasite Moth combo. 3500. Immediately saying if you don't have Sword of Solitary Poison, you lose. Or Soul Exchange, but I have the book for that. But right, right, exactly. Yeah. Or trap card, right? Yeah. Half of greed. Very nice. Breaker control. So much for psychic shockwave. And a book on the moth. Just stalling here. Jinzo with a back row. Another book. Still just stalling here. Yeah, at this point I kind of knew I wasn't losing. Yeah, I mean, there's no way at this point. Yeah, actually, even if you they play Spear Crib or turn off their own skill, you can't you can't lose anymore. Yeah, I was like, there's. What I was scared of kind of was Soul Exchange and then a Tribute. Yeah. To get over the moth, but as soon as they were left, like, no items, I was like, okay, that's not happening. Right, and drew the Parasite Moth combo again in game right. two. I'm just too good. Just too good. Just draw the out. Let's take a hit here, though. Oh, well, there's the breaker. Yeah, I need to lost drop the top of it. It was kind of funny. There you go. As there's some chain discussion in the chat, Cosmic Cyclone to make sure that doesn't stop you from winning. And I'm trying to get floodgated. Right. Man, once you summon Moth, it's just oh, there, there's, there's, there's the okay. answer. Okay. No. Nope. Nope. Had the book. Always had the out. Always had the answer. Uh, yeah. So here's where I throw because I was like super. Because um, basically, I was like, I saw the Zoma and I got spooked. I was super like trying to play around Zoma a lot here. Yeah. And so I kind of just like threw losing the game. Like I know I'm the Warrior Lady, so now there's a game to Glossalus Punch Warrior right here. But I was super like hyper focused on beating exactly Zoma. Yeah, that makes sense. It doesn't. I was just playing bad. I was tunnel visioned. But they don't have the class spoiler alert, so. Oh, but if it was Zoma and you did. Well, if it was Zoma and I didn't do that, then I have the parasite to protect it anyway. Oh, you're right. Uh, yeah, that's true. Okay, yeah, no, definitely not. Didn't play that optimally, but doesn't matter, Moth's too strong. So true. So, uh, now that Slash Revolver has been shown to be eliminated in top eight, what I'm gonna do here is uh, switch it up a little bit, and we're gonna look at the deck list of the Spellproof deck that just got knocked out. So, hey, Elmama, what's going on? <clears throat> I'm gonna open a special little GIMP video for you here. Um, do you want me to share this to you? 
Or, hold on. Yeah. Okay, it should be switched over to what you're watching. Cool. Okay. So we see here, this is the top eight spellproof deck. You just saw Loosed Moth. Um, the three Colossal, three Jinzo seems to be pretty standard in the way people are building the deck now. Um, so does the Shockwave. Now the differences are obviously everybody's going to play multiple copies of Summoner's Art. Um, the differences here I see are Decoichi, Overload Fusion, and the one copy of Zoma. And then obviously Soul Exchange is probably... I don't know if everybody plays three. It's Soul Exchange is pretty standard, but like three is... Yeah, three is, I think. It's like two or, two or three usually, I think. Yeah, yeah. So it's just a ratio of that. The, the Zoma, the one copy of Zoma, the, only the double book instead of the three... And then the double Dekoichi. I guess Dekoichi yeah. might just be to have a turn one play other than Colossalus, yeah. right? So what they seem to be using the Dekoichi for was I played another match against this person in Swiss. And what happened was, I think both games, they went first. Mm. Or no, one of the games they went first. And then they went like set Dekoichi. And so they block an attack, they recoup the damage, and then they make Cyber Dragon live, which is pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, no, that seems good to have a just to have a turn one play other than yeah. Class I drew list. double Zoma against them twice in that match, so yeah, that makes sense. Hey, yeah. Toxin, what's going on? Yeah, Z Zoma's a pretty good card, right? Pretty good. Mm -hmm, I heard it is. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's just look at the side deck. The extra deck is obviously very standard. You have your six, the five of the best fusion monsters in the game, and then it's counter attack for the overload. Um, yeah, so there's the Waking, which is why you need those five fusion monsters. Uh, double Mind Crush for Cyber Angels, which seems like it's just not doing well. We'll see that. We'll, we'll see that in the breakdown at the end. Uh, there's the, there's one Cosmic. This is probably specifically for the Moth matchup, right? Uh, you've got. Uh, the... I mean, like, okay, against Spellproof, I gotta say something. Against Spellproof, the Cosmic isn't that great. In Spellproof against Moth, because a lot of the times. They're going to be chaining the Parasite to like a book or something, and then right. you can't Cosmic them. Yeah, you're right. Or they're just going to have a book to chain to the Cosmic. Yeah, so I wonder what this Cosmic is cited specifically for then. It could just yeah, be... Yeah, I don't know. I think it might have just been theoretically for Moth, but they didn't realize like it's not that it's good. It's not that great, yeah. And then there's the Diffusion, obviously, for uh, Dragoon and Unions. Uh, sort of Poison is probably good against moth as well as yeah like, they cited it against me yeah exactly so you never actually had to run into this so i, I just assume it was cited in game two just never drawn uh i saw it in the first match oh you did see it in the first match and then it got cosmic oh, okay <laughs> got it cool all right well that was slash revolver's deck uh we're gonna go back to the replays and the next top eight match is actually let's close this one out and let's actually hide gimp on the screen all right, it's Ryan Atlas against Tensei. So you get to commentate on two Thag matches in a row. How does that feel? Uh, this is the one, uh, I don't know. Cool. And uh, not to show you guys the same decks over and over again, but that's just the order I happened to put them in. This was not intentional. Not I mean, this cause... was the order of like the actual bracket, right? I think so, yeah. So so not meant yeah. to cause any harm to any person yeah. living or dead. The top Mm -hmm. Top half of the bracket was two spellproof, two moth, and the bottom half of the bracket was jank. Jank! <laughs> well, one of that jank actually made it pretty far. I don't want to spoil everything. Well, yeah, because but... <laughs> because because the whole side of the bracket was jank. One of them had to make it to finals. Fair, fair. All right, here's the spellproof against moth matchup number two. See if this one goes somewhat differently. Uh, the moth build is well. I don't know if it's different because the. Do you have, you also have Wall of D, don't you? We'll see your deck later. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. There's the Colossalus. There's a couple set, and that's not uh, a bad turn one. Turn the stream over. Oh right. Discord stream. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Change windows. Back to this. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Uh, breaker Parasite combo, but no mods, so it doesn't do much. Double set pass. Have a Summoner's Art. Gonna put on a little bit of pressure here. I oh, say that as I know the wall is there. Yeah. And as I know that is there. Ooh, that does not feel good. That's an auto scoop. Because that Book of Moon doesn't You're do it. So, yes. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, main deck is like crazy. Main, <laughs> right. deck, main deck chopper yeah. is crazy. Ryan joking, they all scoop before I bring on my blowback. Obviously, you should wait to, for your point to actually have Jinzo Copium. All right. Yeah, yeah. Summoners are again starting off with the 2300's normal summon turn one. Not too bad. Double Mind Crush Hero, but... which was specifically supposed to be, I think, for that Summoner's Art, and kind of didn't work out because happened to go second. Yeah, I don't like Summoner's Art against Spellproof. It's not good. What, you mean Mind Crush? In my opinion. Oh, Mind Crush, yeah. Yeah, no, I don't either. Sets the Parasite just so he can have a card draw. I like that. It's like actually so bricky. Yeah, no, Mind Crush is very bad against Spellproof, I agree. Like, you know, sometimes the temptation is that, like, you have to side something when that's not necessarily true. I think you can just kind of yeah. stick with your main deck at some point. Uh, I mean, some yeah, place. I actually just keep all three books in because I never have soul exchanges. Right, exactly. The DD Word Lady will take care of that one bird. And then, like, the other problem with Mind Crush is that now there's side cards, so you're losing to Shockwave. Right, exactly. Uh, there's a Dust Tornado on the Book of Moon. So got rid of two back row, but that breaker is locked down forever. Cosmic on the freshly said Zoma, taking away any monster presence Tensei would have had. Cyber Dragon will come out. Is there more monsters here? No, it's just Cyber Dragon. Good. So no, not much pressure yet. The Nobleman of Cross out, interestingly enough. Okay, so... Uh, I got this from Tensei here. Um, he told me that he just forgot to set it up. He was maining it, he forgot to set it up. That's Oof. why it's here. Oh, that's rough. Yo! El Baba with the tier 1 sub using Thunderbolt. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Alright. And we're moving on. We see a Blast Spear set face down. Is that going to be what wins the game? No, it's not. It's going to get hit by the Nobleman. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> rewarded. Keep Actually rewarded. Be. Misplay. What misplay? All planned. All planned. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally meant to keep the Blast Spear in. Yeah. I mean, not in. Not I mean in. this is why Thag is the best team in speed race, right? So true. Yeah. Soul Exchange for the Jinzo. Now we have two dead Mind Crush. I'm actually surprised he didn't Mind Crush. I would have Mind Crush Jinzo, yeah. Yeah, I'm honestly surprised he didn't go for that because I guess the discarding the Moth is too risky, but yeah, I but still like, would have done top deck, it. Top deck Parasite doesn't do anything anyway because right. I don't know a way to trigger it. Yeah, I, I feel like that actually wasn't played optimally either. Could have... Minecraft to Jinzo, do they show us their next cards in deck? Let's see. They're just talking. I mean, Tensei had the Floodgate, which was the next card. Yeah, but like, I want to see the card after that. Because like, right now he would just uh, set Floodgate, right? DD Warrior Lady, let's say, would have probably banished the Cyber Dragon. But like, what, what happens after that is the question. So, yeah. We'll never know. So, you know, this is why sometimes it's okay to blind Mind Crush. Or it's not completely blind, right? It would have been... Mm -hmm. It would have been a good guess. Right, to yeah. see what would have happened there. All right, anyway, let's take a look at Tensei's moth build here. I'm sure everyone loves would love to see what the pet best way is to build moth, or the second best way. <laughs> All right, uh, showing it to you, putting it on the stream. All right, yeah, so obviously you've got your moth package, which is what makes the deck broken. You've got breaker control pieces, which is three breaker. Three DD Word Lady. Yes, the video will be saved. I'm going to throw it onto YouTube at some point this week. Uh, Book of Moon, only two, not three, because choosing to play the Nobleman here. Again, Floodgate also, only two, not going all in on the Floodgate, because choosing to tech in the Dust Tornado. Uh, interesting choice on Dust, no Cosmic. Uh, two Wall of D and three Zoma. Thoughts on this deck being playing Moth yourself? Um, I mean, yeah, there's definitely some main deck choices I don't like, like 22 and the Dust, I feel like Cosmic is a lot better. Like, yeah, it pays a thousand against Burn, but you can beat Burn even when you pay a thousand and then like Dust just loses to Jinzo, as you saw. Yeah, exactly. And it's like Shockwave, that too. Right. Um, and then the Floodgates in the main are like fine, I think. And the Knock in the main is also kind of fine because people are setting a lot against Moth. Yeah. 
There's just one thing. With me personally, I like to play one copy of Rhoda. Yes, I do have Moth to t only to test against. Uh, but I do like to play one copy of Rhoda just to have four DD Warrior Lady. I don't know what actual Moth players think about that. But... I haven't really tested that. I think it's probably fine, though. Yeah. But yeah, that's that would be my thought on, like, instead of the Nobleman or the Dust Tornado, just maybe Rhoda, or just not play either of those at all and just have the 20-card deck, like you said. So, that probably makes a lot of sense. Uh, I think the Jinzo side is for Burn. Uh, Defusion, obviously, is for Unions and Dragoon, although Moth kills Dragoon anyway, so probably just for Unions is where you need it. Uh, Mind Crush is... Four Cyber Angels, obviously, which I just, I just... It's sad that it's not even a, a deck that's here. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, obviously, your standard six best fusion monsters extra deck. Although, I would argue if, if uh, Cyber Blader is better than Ryu Senshi, but, you know, that's that's probably a, a pretty irrelevant conversation since there's no mm -hmm. uh, waking the dragon here. All right. Yeah, two book is very interesting. I think Booker Moon is just... It's so good, but again, maybe that's a little bit of prep preparing for the spellproof matchup. But then you wonder, like, okay, but how does Knock help with the spellproof matchup? I mean, obviously it hit last yeah, year. I, don't know. But I, don't I know. just think Book is way too versatile to not play three. Yeah, but I can understand kind of playing two, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think playing three Book is like there's very few decks where it's not correct, but it's I think it's definitely correct in Moth. Anyway, let's go back to the replays. The jank uh, side of the bracket, finally. The jank side of the bracket, the moment everybody's been waiting for. Right? Copium. All right, here we go. We have Nikki versus Alex Caruso Fan4, who I believe is Timothy on Discord. Yeah, that's Timothy. All right, here we go. Right, Alex this Caruso is a jank. Yes. This is like, we got a union here. But it's, it's, yeah. it's more. I mean, it's, it's jank. one jank deck. Because it's actually literally my name. Let me, let me, uh, I yeah. don't know why I've been doing this. I'm going to show both hands so we can have all the information here. Okay. Because um, if, you know, Just vacancy, like Timothy does. Yeah, exactly. All right. Thinking whether or not make the opponent redraw. I think you see Hanger scramble and you, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this hand is uh, pretty nice from Nikki. Wait, if you see Hanger scramble, why wouldn't you? I guess you have oh, mind so you crush. Can, so you can crush it. You crush the hanger and then just kind of out pressure uh, them, maybe. Okay, I guess I could see it. I just I think I would see hanger scramble and I would auto say redraw, but I guess it's fine because you have the mind crush. Um, there's a the yeah. breaker. Thing is, like you can't even crush the scramble because it has a grave effect. Right. There's this. There's a crush on the hanger. Pretty good. Uh, Scramble and Cosmic do get set anyway. Um, I was gonna say when <laughs> when that battle phase was clicked, I was like, I was like, is this really going to happen? It's not. Okay. Um, does the breaker? You have to try to hit the scramble here, don't you? Because you know what you know what's probably there. Oh, you know it's definitely there because yeah, you, you saw. Yeah, it's definitely there. Yeah, you know for sure the scramble exists. You have to try to hit it, and you missed. That feels bad. <laughs> That does not feel great. Lost a wall of D to actually nothing, and now your breaker is too weak to do anything. Yeah, there's... Um, distributing breaker make any sense there to you? Uh, it does, kind of. But it does lose to the scramble Z that you know is in hand, so no. Right. Yeah. Uh, on the top deck, Y2. I mean, now, yeah, now there's all three pieces available. Yeah, we don't even need to fuse here. It's just like X beat down. Yeah, X beat down, but that that only work for one turn because here comes the Cyber Dragon. Yeah, I mean Union Mirrors used to literally be X beat down back when people were playing Lost Wind. Ah uh, yes. You just wouldn't fun use times, and just make X. Hmm. Jack says in chat, you never shuffle with Millennium Mind. Never? I don't know. I feel like if you don't see Mind Crush and you see your opponent has you know Hanger Scramble, you kind of have to, right? Uh, I think Timothy made me shuffle one time. Okay. And it was, I had, like, Warrior Lady Book Parasite uh, Breaker or something. It was a crazy hand. And okay. they didn't have Mind Crush, so they made me shuffle. Okay, that makes sense, yeah. And I ended up drawing to, like, an almost as good hand. So <laughs> yeah, that's the problem, right? Now, now they no longer have hand knowledge. 
Uh, Book of Moon will stop XYZ Dragon Cannon from popping off this turn, but now you need to have an out to it, which is not how dance. No. <laughs> that, nope. That's not gonna do it. Big scramble coming out here. Gonna have enough damage to win the game. Yeah, I don't think we're winning this one. Yep, that's it. Okay. Union yeah, still man. look pretty strong, not gonna lie. I mean, it's a pretty good matchup. Oh, double mind crush. Oh no. Oh yeah, well. The thing is, like the only thing that's good to crush here is the hanger. Like all the other things have grave. Use and grave. Yeah, but but still deactivating or not oh, allowing scramble Kaiku. to special summon two monsters? I didn't realize we had Kaiku. Oh, we have Kaiku too, you're right. Yep. Yeah, kind without of the hanger the for us. Yeah, without the hanger the deck really slows down. And now Kaiku gets to basically restrict the union combination skill. A lot of lot of thumbs up emojis here. And a think and another thumbs up. Okay. Cannot believe this man opened double mind crush. A foolish oh, burial is so mad. Yeah, but you can't you can't do anything. That's just uh. Man, if you take if you have exactly Mind Crush Kaiku, you just <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty good. Yep. Yeah, I mean this is how a lot of how free GX box Moth versus Unions win. If you could stick the Kaiku, you kinda win. That's... that's insane, yeah. Oh boy, more Kaiku. More Kaiku and Mind Crush again. A little bit worse going second over here. Although you can still hit the double Y now. Right. We're just gonna punch. Yeah, yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta take that scramble out while you can. Oh, um, no! No, you don't. Just kidding. Okay. It's fine, what do I know? Pass? Wow. Yeah. Summon Breaker okay, to Pass. Be fair, to be fair, XY has only 18 attack. So. No, wait. Are you serious? No. No, 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 no. It has 22. Wait, XY has 22? XY has 22. Wrong? Oh. Their, their attack oh. points are actually just uh, like if Y was equipped to X. That's how they come up with that. Wait, are they actually? I don't ever notice that. Oh, you're just not a you're just not a good union player. It's okay. <laughs> True. I didn't even win the showdown. Right. And there is a waking the dragon on the side. Oh, is this going to be how this game is won? We have found the win condition. <laughs> no way, Nikki, don't do it. <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> no. Thing is, like XYZ deals with waking targets pretty well anyway. Yeah, because the scramble is in grave now. Huh. Yeah, like, what are we gonna do? Oh, okay, that makes sense. Oh, yeah. because uh, now you can't scramble. Yeah, should I have you pop the back or you can't? You actually just can't. Here we go. Here we go. It's, it's gonna help. No. Okay. Oh, now we're gonna add back and pop the back row. Goodbye. Oh, now there's nothing to pop the fusion! I got this done to be in Showdown too. This is Dragoon, right? Um, chat, Ch Ninjetti and Chat yeah, is saying Joker, but this is Dragoon. It's, well, it'd be Joker if they still had a pop left. No, that's no, Joker. that's okay. no, no, they have nothing left. It's Dragoon, do 20 to burn. <laughs> no, you were supposed to summon Dragoon. Okay, I guess okay, I get this it. This is fair. This is fair because now they, yeah. That, okay, I didn't realize there was the fusion material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't three. realize there was. I didn't know there was a second X Y Z coming either. Okay, yeah, sure. But yeah. Oh, if you have goodness. Kaiku, they can't actually fusion again once you pop the first one. I don't know. I still think. I think yeah, Dragoon was now. definitely the more aggressive play, but this might be the safer play. Yeah, this is the better play, I think, if they have the fusion materials in grave. Because yeah. now you just negate whenever they try to pop, and then they don't have another pop. It's okay, you know my bias. Mm -hmm. We'll force you to discard the monster.
build a little Walling bit of a wall. I bet you somebody's probably right now looking at this and thinking, yeah, if you had night assailant. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> No, guys, neither sound is wrong. It blocks your combos. It blocks you from drawing your actual good cards. Okay. Now you should play neither sound and then play against me, and then I can beat you. Yes, totally. Oh, here comes a mind crush. Um. There's no targets. I don't. Think. Are we out of targets? No, we're not. Okay. Oh no, we got one Z. Bob. Got one Z. Crush it. Why not? Actually crushed. What are the exact rules for Mind Crush? So, like, technically, is saying Z tank correct, or do you have to type out the whole name? You don't have to type out the whole name. I think it's if you get to the point where there's no other card it could be, then. Hmm, okay. Like, if you call... Um... Like, if you call Dragon Cannon, there's two of them. There's <laughs> XYZ and XY, so you have to specify. Uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, I couldn't think of another example. You oh, can't call fusions, I mean, if, but... <laughs> if, if, you call, if you call Gadget, right, there could you be... You can't call Gadget, yeah. Could be many, many of them. All right, fair enough. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go back to the deck lists, because why not? We're going to look at Nikki's deck. Sadly, Unions did not make it further than top eight. Sorry, Ninjetti. Uh, I mean, let's open that screen. I mean, this is the same list that Ursus has been posting in the Union channel for the past two years, so... Ah, yes. Literally last format unions. Not even adding oh. the floodgate trap hole. Nope. Same list that Ursus has been posting for the past two years. Yep. Double X, double Y, triple Z, triple hanger, triple scramble, a couple foolish, triple book, and a couple of cosmic cyclone. I don't even know. There's not really much to talk about. I mean, it's kind of just copy-pasted Ursus decks from the last two years, like you said. Um, obviously the extra deck yep, is also copy-pasted. Yeah, you got two each of the ones you'll summon a lot. You got one each of the other two. Um, you got a Lost Wind in the side, interesting. And a Defusion. One Mind Crush, obviously for the Cyber Angels. The Offerings, which is, I don't know, I guess for Moth. Uh, and then the Night Beam, which is just, I guess it's to hit Lost Wind. I don't, a lot of these side deck choices are interesting. The third Foolish Burial. I don't know about any of these, I'm be honest with you. Well, I, I know about, like, I understand the first three? I don't understand the Offerings Night being Foolish. Do you have yeah, an explanation? No. Uh, yep, right. cards. Yep, cards. All right, well, that was Unions. That was the Unions, the only Unions match you'll see today. So... All right, and I think now is the time I have to head out, so... Okay, cool. Have a nice rest of your stream. Goodbye. Thanks. Thanks for joining, Peter. Yep. All right. It's just me against the world again. And now I'm going to go back to the replays. Show you those replays again. And you do have to say the correct thing technically. Yeah, that's what I thought. I'm like, you can't just like say half the name, right? Because the card text specifically says declare one entire card name. But yeah, I can see why people aren't going to be like, well, you didn't say the whole name. Because we don't, what we don't want is people to be Googling card names, right? So, here we go. Uh, this is the final top eight match where we have Mr. Potato, who is also Ariel Dar on Discord. And we have JDG's own Justice. That's right, JDG had a member make the top eight. Let's see how far Justice can go. Losing the rock, paper, scissors, obviously already embarrassing me on stream. As we see, Justice is playing the direct attack deck, what he likes to call Raging Cat, which is obviously what it's going to be called when I post it in the Discord. Here comes the Raging Flame Sprite protected by a Waboku face down, and that is all we're going to see for now. This is Shadow Reborn, obviously, as it's not TP, and that's the only other merit skill in existence. What is this Shadow Reborn deck that's made top cut? Breaker will attempt to pop this Wabaku. Wabaku will be chained and no damage or no monster destroyed for the turn. Three, nope, just two back row here from Justice. Room for Growth activating, pumping up this Flame Sprite to 1000 attack. It's going to get into 1000 damage and gain its 
thousand attack points permanently going to 1100. Mr. Potato, Ariodo choosing not to attack and try to kill this flame sprite, allowing it to potentially get to, oh, I need to do show both. Oops. All right, so we do see that this is a Relinquish deck, obviously, as uh, there's two Black Illusion Rituals and no Relinquish. That's got to feel kind of bricky. Uh, Lava Golden coming in from Justice in case there's ever two monsters on the board. He's going to pump this Raging Flame Sprite up all the way to 2,000 right now and still go for the direct damage rather than going to kill the Breaker. Let's see if that turns out to be the wrong attack there. Um, I do think since this is technically like a kill your opponent as fast as you can deck, it's almost always correct to attack directly, even if you have a chance to kill a monster. But let's find out. I am just a control player in general, so I don't, I don't know. I could be wrong. Uh, draws the Amethyst Cat and just going to go ahead and attack with a 3000 Flame Sprite. And that's it. We have a concession of game one from Ariel Dark. This is exactly why I think Relinquish will never be good. I agree that consi the inconsistency is probably a bit too much. But when you draw pre-prep like you did right now. Um, yeah. Shout out to Have Decent Warriors Chat. Have Decent watching these top cut matches. Truly, truly. Relinquish best deck, what you mean? Yeah, well, we'll find out, won't we? Here's a pre-prep. That's pretty good. Going to grab the Black Illusion Ritual and one copy of the Languish. Again, Justice has a Floodgate here and a Zoma. So pretty good back row here from Justice. We see the Illusion Ritual come out. Gonna see the Illusionist discarded. Summon Relinquish. See the Floodgate. Now the good thing about the Relinquish loop for Justice specifically is because he has a direct attack deck, he doesn't actually care about triggering the loop, right? But he also does really care about Jinzo. So Jinzo is not going to kill this cat. And uh, considering you have three trap cards, I think it's over. Yep, we do see an auto concede from Justice there to the Jinzo having all trap cards in hand. He must be siding out to Jinzo Cobium. Surely. Let's see how game three goes. There is another pre-prep in the open opening pre-prep two games out of three in a 30 card deck i just want you to i just want you to know how impressive that is do go ahead and summon the relinquish right away to protect it from floodgate trap hole now if you're justice you know that there is no chance of a faceless right now so i wonder if you actually try to attack the relinquish he does not, does not care, going for the damage regardless. The 1050 damage is dealt from the cat. Another pre-prep. Dude, this pre-prep is an insane card. Drawing two pre-prep in your first seven cards in a 30 card deck. And it wasn't even the first seven cards, right? Because if it wasn't for the pre-prep, it would be your first five cards. Actually hard drawing double pre-prep. In two turns. This is potentially 2,700 damage. However, there is a wall down there. There's actually two walls down there. This puts the DD Word Lady at zero and the Relinquish at zero because they're both losing 1,600 attack here. Uh, what exactly does Relinquish say? An attack defense becomes equal to that monster's. Okay, so Relinquish can equip a different monster. No, I think it would still be minus 1,600 regardless of it, if it equips a new monster. I think so. There's the Amethyst Cat. More room for growth. Going to actually attack into the Warrior Lady this time and not going for the direct damage. Because he knows about the second Black Illusion ritual, what he's doing here is trying to take away the target for the second Relinquish. However, it did not work as... Uh... Wait, Justice, why are you taking damage? Your monster was stronger because of room for growth. Um... Uh, that's not correct, but okay. We're going to see if the 400 damage actually matters, all right? Sets a Nudoya. That is the out to Jinzo. However, he top deck a monster, which is exactly what he needed for the second Relinquish to take the Nudoria. 
and um, that's absurd. Double pre-prep and the Jinzo. Didn't even have to trigger Shadow Reborn even one time to win this game. That's actually awesome. So Relinquished actually moving on to top four. I wonder how far it can get. Why don't we just show you Justice's deck and then we'll take a look at that. Ah, didn't Cyrus. I mean, that could be the case. That could be the case. Yeah, I thought he did Cyrus, but I guess you're right. He might not have. Anyway, let's look at let's look at the direct attack deck here. We've got obviously your two direct attack monsters, which is Triple Cat, Triple Flame Sprite. Got the one of Lava Golem as the tech card in case your opponent has scary boss monsters, um, like uh, what do you call it? I think you are thinking of energizing elements, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Room for Growth doesn't restrict your damage. So you would always activate it, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, Lava Golem does take out your opponent, establishes some scary boss monsters that you can't get rid of otherwise. And then you can, like, wheel or Woboku or wall the Lava Golem. Zoma also obviously wins instantly with Lava Golem. So a bunch of traps with your direct attack monsters. Uh, we see a second Lava Golem in the side. The Nudoria, which we just saw, is for the Jinzo exactly. Golden Ladybug and Swarm of Locusts, I know because I discussed this deck with him, are for the burn matchup. Uh, Nightmare Wheel is also for that. So the burn mirror, obviously, you win if you have more Nightmare Wheels than your opponent. Waking the Dragon is, I guess, just a side deck for you have a lot of back rows. So if somebody is siding into like straight flush or something like that, you throw in the Waking, you get a free fusion monster. You might just win the game because of that. All right. Very quick there, no no deep analysis needed. Let's just go to the top four replays where you will see the winners of the matches we just watched. So starting off, we have Ryan Atlas against Sofa Cord. <clears throat> As we see here, Sofa Cord has a big advantage since Ryan had to wake up extremely early to actually play this match. So playing against your opponent when they're sleepy, remember, is a huge advantage. I have specifically misplayed in games because I was tired. All right, here we go. Spellproof armor against Moth. Have we seen this before? Yes, we have. Let's see what happens here. <clears throat> we see the Colossalus and the Shockwave right away, uh, but it looks like that Shockwave isn't going to be long for this world. It's gone. Don't have to worry about the Shockwave Jinzo play anymore. Uh, Blast Sphere does come in off the top for Ryan. But uh, it's interesting to see if he goes for the Blast Sphere phase down or if he's going to go ahead and play the second Colossalus here. Nope, going to go ahead and just set the Blast Sphere attack with the first Colossalus. A little bit of damage. Here's the Zoma. Do we have double Zoma? We do not. Okay. Imagine double Zoma just ending the game. Parasite on Zoma though does gonna is going to get out the moth. Right? But it, but Ryan does have the soul exchange. I need to show both again. I keep forgetting. Okay. Uh the face down's a cosmic. Okay. DD Warrior Lady set because again the skill does not prevent you from setting monsters only from normal and special summoning. So if you're playing Moth, I hate to give Moth players advice, remember? The turn you activate your first skill, you can still set monsters as well as flip summon monsters that are already set. Alright. Moth will take out this Colossalus. The top deck, Jinzo. Going to Summoner's Art into the Colossalus. And then probably Soul Exchange this Moth to go ahead and drop that Jinzo on the field. No trap cards. Immune to Book of Moon. Silver Cord's gonna have to shuffle the moth in to try to draw a Jinzo answer. Does not get it. Summons to go ahead and summons a breaker. Flips that DD Warrior Lady. DD Warrior Lady is going to try to out this Jinzo. It's going to work. And now Breaker gets hit by Blast Spear. Actually absurd. The solitary sword of poison is going to win the game. I'm just kidding, there's a Cosmic Cyclone down there. This actually kills the Blast Sphere, oddly enough. So, uh, actually saved herself some life points right there. Nope, but then there's just a set pass on a Breaker, but the Soul Exchange doesn't exactly help you either. There's a Book of Moon, which does actually nothing. 
So this looks like game one. This is game one. <clears throat> Notice how a lot of players do not give up the game early because sometimes your opponent will misplay. So sometimes your win con is literally just opponent will misplay. So I'm just saying never count that out from happening. As we see, no opening turn monsters here from Ryan. But uh, DD Warrior Lady is all Sofa's going to be able to use to put pressure on here. Probably just take the 1500 here, correct? Uh, I'm going to special summon that side drive that. And probably just go in with the 21. Yep. Banish both monsters. Summon another DD Warrior Lady. Get into an attack. Book of Moon that one. You can't go down to a thousand. That's too risky. Um, nothing in this hand for Ryan to do, really. This does not look good for the Spellproof player in this situation. Has to take this 1500. Another Cyber Dragon will come out. And this time, going to go ahead and Soul Exchange that. Book on Res. And now the thought from Ryan of, do you actually summon the Cyber Dragon? Yes, you do. But you don't attack. That actually makes a lot of sense. And oof, that feels really bad. Because there's no Parasite Moth combo. And it looks like we're going to summon a Moth, and that's game. Wait! Even though it's Battle Step. No, he was down to a thousand life points. His Cosmic Cyclone was dead. Wow, see, the number of life points you have is so relevant. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you got. I guess you have to keep yourself above a thousand if you have Cosmic, right? Although, I don't remember if you drew that right after he took the damage. Maybe. Summons the Colossalus. Activates the Knock, choosing not to waste the Cosmic right now, which I think is actually really smart. You want to save that for the Parasite, if at all possible. Can't knock this Warrior Lady, so just going to go into it. And we're going to see a double Banish here, probably. Yes. Okay. Uh, here comes Breaker of the Magical Warrior. Going to get Floodgated. As we all know, this deck is uh, called Breaker Control by most people. Not most people, some people, specifically Silk Cord. Because, let's be honest, it's Breaker Control with Moth as an engine, right? Uh, Jinzo will come down here. Drew another Warrior Lady. That's the third Warrior Lady in four turns. Actually ridiculous. But, Ryan drew the Colossalus. So, going to be able to protect the Jinzo here. And Jinzo will just attack for game. So, nicely done. Both players had some pretty cool top decks. No Parasite, though, that game from Sofa Cord. And again... I guess if you want to say Moth has a weakness, that weakness is technically, if you don't draw Parasite, you're kind of in trouble. Especially against a very aggressive deck like uh, like Spellproof. So, there are no more Moths left in the tournament. So, the finals video will not have Moth in it. I'm sure some people are happy to know that. And why don't we take a look at Sofa Cord's Moth deck while we're here. Alright, so this is the second Moth build of the day. Looking at right here, we have a uh, the Moth Package Classic, the Breaker, with DD Warrior Lady. This 11 card monster lineup is almost always going to be your monster lineup in any good Moth deck right now. So it's literally just 5 card Moth Package, 6 card Control Package. That's all it is. It's really that simple. And then you play three Zoma because that's actually what enables an OTK. Uh, you play three Book of Moon and then you have three slots to do whatever you want with. Sofa Core choose to use them. Two on backward removal and Cosmic Cyclone and one on just a tech wall of D. For probably for the Spellproof matchup. I wish she was still here to talk about this. But let's go down and take a look at the other stuff we have here. We've got a couple of Mind Crush for a Cyber Angel matchup. Which, you know, we didn't get to see any of. Uh, straight Flush for the Burn matchup. Double Nobleman for, again, I think the Burn matchup probably. And Jinzo. So Heavy Side for Burn Stall here. Which makes sense. Because Moth does struggle sometimes against any kind of a Burn Stall deck. Whether that's Straight Burn or like Rat Box or something like that. Um, extra deck is whatever. It doesn't matter. There's no Waking the Dragon. Um, but yeah, that's, that's Moth. 
and you won't have to see it again in this stream. So congratulations. Goodbye, Moth. I hope we never see your face again. All right, moving on to the final replay of the day. Ariel Dar, Mr. Potato against Alex Caruso Fan 4 and or known as Timothy. Let's show both hands from the beginning this time. And let's start the relinquished against Millennium Eye matchup. There's a Millennium Eye looking at opponent's hand, open the Mind Crush again. So allowing the opponent to keep the hand probably might take out the DD Warrior Lady here, I would imagine. Yep, no DD Warrior Lady. And now you know your opponent, unless they top deck to a normal summonable monster, they're probably not going to summon the Karibo. So you're in a good spot here for the Mind Crush player. No, the finals is I'm going to keep that for Rook's YouTube channel only. So we're going to just go ahead and do that separately on YouTube only. All right, because like I said at the beginning, I'm not here to steal anyone's content. There's Breaker, the Phenomenal Warrior, coming down, hitting get hit with the Book of Moon. DD Warrior Lady flips up, get hit with the Floodgate Trap Hole, but now how are you going to deal with the most broken card in Speed Duels, Zoma the Spirit? Do you fear this? Does not, okay? Top decks, the pre-prep of rights. I want to tell you something. Right there, okay? Three copies of Relinquished, all bad draws. Three copies of Black Illusion Ritual. I think there's three copies of it. We'll, we'll, we'll find out eventually, right? All bad draws. Uh, Jinzo, bad draw. Your second Faceless, bad draw. Pre-prep, probably wins you the game. And Drew, exactly pre-prep. Pretty good. That's pretty good. Sometimes RNG is all you need. But Book of Moon will prevent that Zoma from being stolen. Uh, Breaker will flip summon here since only the DD Warrior Lady was floodgated. However, the problem is now you get faceless. And I really don't know how you deal with this since your monster zones are full. And now Arielgar can just play for the deck out if he wants to. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what's going to happen now. Like, we're just chilling. Gonna draw two on the allure. Pick up another pre prep. Summon Breaker first. Sace loses Spear Kariba. That's fine. Um, Was that too quick? Did he not wait for the Breaker's second effect to activate, making it lose 300 attack? Yeah. I guess they chain, the chain was too quick there, but, you know, that's fine. Breaker can still take out the Zoma now. But uh, it doesn't look like that's what's going to happen. Although, that's really what should happen. Uh, declare the effect of the Faceless, yes. And then double Relinquished. Takes the DD Warrior Lady. The second Relinquished will take the Zoma. And now the Breaker will just attack the uh, weaker Breaker here. It's a Dragoon! Sadly, there is no Dragoon in the top cut. There's Cyber Dragon. Bigger than Breaker. Obviously bigger than both Relinquished right now too. So that's cool, I guess. Only one DD Warrior Lady, so you can actually take out both Relinquished here. So just going to go ahead and set that. Sag indeed. Book of Moon will be set face down. That's probably going to be answer to this breaker that's no doubt coming out here. Taking on breaker summon. Yes. All right, letting the summon go, making your opponent choose the target first is probably correct when you don't have anything to worry about immediately losing, like a floodgate or a wall, right? Arielgar doesn't have to do anything. Can literally just sit here and chill and force the opponent to have the out, right? Now what would be a really good out obviously would be something like Lava Golem, but we don't we don't know if Timothy runs that or not. Um, there is a Mind Crush. I don't think this one does anything. It could be too late. You need Mind Crush exactly when your opponent activates Black Illusion Ritual. And I think in spite of Millennium Eye being a thing, 
you might want to save your mind crushes for exactly either that or if you see pre-prep so let's actually see what happens hey you know odd toxin the thing is um with dragoon is that it only had three people played in this tournament and someone working on dragoon list themselves i think their list could be improved a lot because so can mine but i i think it has potential to be like at least tier three if optimized and played properly it just needs a little bit more representation to actually have a chance i think you were actually one of the people playing dragoon right so i, I just think the deck hasn't been optimized yet but we'll see We'll, we'll, you'll see the deck breakdown here after this game. Uh, we'll see the Cider go into a relinquished, kill that Zoma. Um, then we'll see the Faceless come down. I wonder what the plan is to go ahead and stop the break the loop here. In game one, there might not be a plan. Is this this is game one, right? This is game one. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, you were one of the three people to play Dragoon. Again, taking out both relinquished here. Does he summon the Faceless from hand? Does not show the second Faceless. The question is, does he allure right now? No. Why make your opponent take the lead in the deck out? Or get closer to taking the lead in the deck out? Deck out is actually a win con. I think you just stick with it. Here comes a Dark Ruler Hades, which could be the counter to Faceless we've all been looking for. But the floodgate trap hole, and he didn't book it. He didn't. He didn't book his own Hades to save it from the floodgate. Oh, he didn't book his warrior lady either. Why are you eating these floodgates? You don't have to. You have a book of food. <laughs> it hurts. Tribute set the other faceless to summon a relinquished. Now so many both faceless magicians are alive. Tribute the Hades for the Sidra. Oh no, that feels so bad. Also, Curse of this is the top four. This is the last top four match. Um, the finals is still going to be only on Rook's YouTube channel because I don't want to take that content away from him. So there we go. Oh man, you have got to book those floodgates. You have got to book that floodgate and save your Dark Ruler Hades. He had the second Book of Moon in hand for the second floodgate the next turn. If Dark Ruler Hades is your only out to the loop, you have to protect it. Ah, that's so disappointing. Well, maybe he'll remember in game two. Looks at the opponent's hand again. Has the mind crush. Yes, this is Pegasus versus Relinquished. Millennium Millennium Crush. Yeah, that's actually a good name for the deck. Who else made finals? Uh, Ryan Atlas with Spellproof. Breaker the Broken Warrior. Get it? Because it's Breaker and Broken. Uh, going to go ahead and immediately mind crush a DD Warrior Lady again. Uh, again. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say that this is incorrect because I think you really want to mind crush the Relinquished or after the pre prep to get the ritual spell. Already posted. Can I use top four and top top eight and top four for the channel? Um, you can. I'm just going to be posting this VOD on my channel as well so like don't post exactly the duels like you can do a breakdown if you want like your own breakdown right but like just don't like copy paste the vod obviously you wouldn't do that that wouldn't make any sense why would you have only my voice be on your channel yeah 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 do 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 whatever you want with it all right um sphere Kribo gets banished because of a lore of darkness and then there's just the pass see right there there's a relinquish right so now you wait for your opponent to draw the spell or the pre-prep. And that's when you use a Mind Crush. I think um, Millennium Crush is actually a really, really good matchup against Relinquished. I just don't think this one was played optimally. Sphere Kribble will stop the Breaker from dealing damage. Uh, let's see what goes on here. 
draws the Book of Moon. I think this is going to be a double set pass. Oh, he has the Shadow Reborn for the DD Warrior Lady. That's the first time we've seen Shadow Reborn used, actually. Feels like needs monster presence. So, uh, yeah, let's get into Breakdown Sports. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I don't, as I was talking, I was like, why would you ever want to do my voice on your channel? That would be really weird. Okay. Let's summon Breaker, get Floodgated. Flip up the other Breaker, it can't get over that thing. Nice use of faces there to just straight up build a wall. Um, Breaker will come down from Arieldar as well. Oh man, hit the middle. Hit the middle, do it. Nope, chooses to hit the book, which we immediately get flipped. Alright, fair enough. Breaker will kill Breaker here. Breaker on Breaker violence. What has the world come to? Um, another faceless? Oh, he's got the second mind crush. Okay. He's got a chance, even if the Ritual Spell is drawn here. DD Warrior Lady off the top. This is probably going to be what wins the game. As that's going to take care of the Faceless. Going to have Breaker go in for a big 1600. And that's it. Spear Kriba will stall for one turn. Unless there's another monster, there is not. Uh, face Down is not another monster. Will Book of Moon his own Breaker to set the Zoma? Um... Any thoughts on if that's correct or not? I think it's. I definitely think it's the more aggressive play, right? Like I said before. I don't know if it's a safe play. Uh, anyway, book is set. Uh, Zoma will come down here. You can't stab both attacks if you're Arieldar, Mr. Potato. So it looks like this potato is fried. Copium. Yep. All right. That. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was an example of why Relinquished is always going to be inconsistent, especially playing it at 30 cards. There's so many bricky hands you can draw, uh, but let's see what happens. I also actually find this amazing. I can't wait for you guys to see the Relinquished deck list, because I actually want to talk about that a lot. All right, Millennium Eye, here we go. Um, it lets him keep his hand, no Mind Crush this time. So, if there's a pre-prep here, nope, no pre-prep, okay. Breaker versus Breaker, no attack. Um, I have a feeling Timothy is going to go ahead and use Breaker's effect here. Yes, because why wouldn't you? Take out that Floodgate. And now you... Now the options are... Well, one, why didn't you summon Zoma? Right? Wait. Was that another misplay? You have to summon Zoma there, don't you, in end phase? No. No, think of the lack of pressure you put on by now summoning Zoma. Uh, and there's the Illusion Ritual. You could have you could have saved the DD Warrior Lady. I would have saved the DD Warrior Lady for exactly Relinquished or Faceless. Yeah, and that's the thing too against Relinquished. You have your outs, which are Mind Crush and DD Warrior Lady. You have to be very careful how you use them. Zoma comes out here. Yeah. Saida will take out that thing. You don't attack the Relinquished here, that's correct. He top decked the Faceless too. Oh, this has got to feel horrible. Dang, man, this is absurd. Um, Hades would negate Illusionist, responding to chat here. Uh, Shadow Reborn for the Relinquished. This is why Shadow Reborn is good in this deck. Gonna go ahead and take that Cyber Dragon. Uh, Breaker can get rid of that Cyber Dragon and make that Relinquished be zero. So probably a good play to do that. Yep. You're two cards away from activating Jar, which is fine. But now he needs to draw another DD Warrior Lady to get rid of this, this Faceless. Has the Mind Crush for exactly this situation. Now, you have to wait until your opponent activates the Ritual. Play this correctly. Wait for the Ritual spell. Wait for it. Good. <laughs> wait for it. Alright, DD Warrior Lady off the top. Going to try to go ahead and take out this faceless, but there is a book back there, so it's not going to work right away. Yep. Okay. 
Another pre-prep? I think this one's dead though, because there's no more relinquish. Wait, 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 wait. You don't need a relinquish in deck, do you? Nope, this one's not dead. There's a the spell. There is the mind crush. Double relinquished. Out of hand. This could be the game. Except, just kidding, because he top decked the pre-prep. You know, sometimes you play everything correctly and you still lose. Because your opponent just gets double relinquished. That's so tough, man. Although he didn't play everything correctly, I think he did misplay earlier in the game. But, yeah. Yeah, this is probably over. Here's the DD Warrior Lady to kind of make sure. Hades, but Hades is you need Hades to kill Faceless exactly. Ooh, that feels really bad. Yeah. What's your attack sequence here, though? I... Yeah, I guess you kill the DD Warrior Lady first, or whatever that is first. That makes sense. Would Hades attack, destroy, relinquished, and equip? Um, no, it would not. Because the equip protects Relinquish from being destroyed by battle. And if it was never destroyed by battle, Hades never actually activates. So that's actually incorrect ruling for both of them. But let's see if it actually matters. Uh, waking the Dragon probably should have been sided out in this matchup. Or not sided in. Whatever it is. Hades will try to attack Relinquish. Yeah, they did get the ruling wrong. Um, it doesn't negate the effects of monsters that attacks. It has to destroy them first. So that Faceless shouldn't even be on the field. Um, and then there, there's a lot happening right now. Uh, wait, did you just... You know, you tributes, attributed a Faceless for a Faceless and then summoned a for short. Yeah. And there goes Hades. Nope. Book. Okay. Hades still alive. Oh, but he books his own Relinquish and was going to take the Hades anyway. Yep. I understand there's a lot of pink emojis going on here, but Jaws of Avarice is not going to prevent you from losing this game anymore. Chooses not to attack the Kaiku. That's that's interesting. It's it's over at this point. The relinquished loop is too far established. You didn't prevent it from happening while you could have. Um, double DD Warrior Lady is cool, but it's not. It's just not good enough. Uh, also, I think you should have attacked the Faceless. But I guess it doesn't really matter. The order. Wait, wait, wait. No. No. That only activates on destruction. Okay. Uh, blind allure of darkness possible. But remember, this there's also this relinquish which can just take the kaiku. So Ah, uh, that's why that's why I had to attack the relinquish, because the double relinquish would just win the game. Okay. No, that was actually right. Sure. But now, how do you deal with... Ah, the book kind of deals with it. Okay. You have the book. To deal with the Relinquished. And the Warrior Lady can take out the face. Or... We don't set the book. And we just... Like... Oh, meant to set. Is that okay? Um... Lol. <laughs> Reading this chat right now. Menta said, is that okay? No. <laughs> I'm not letting you set a card when you just refuse to do that. Blind Allure, and then the Faceless just attacks for gain. Yep. That's it. Well, I mean, had a good matchup. Just, I don't think Timothy just played that optimally, or very well. So... There's not really much you can do there, um, but that's the end of that. So let's take a look at our Millennium Crush deck list here. Yep, this is Millennium Eye. 
and this is three breaker three dd two sidra one hades triple book triple mind crush triple zoma so just you know your control package and then you choose whatever you want for the rest of your monsters went with hades and sidra here um yeah definitely quite a few misplays in that game uh from some and then a bunch of just a bunch of staple spell traps obviously the mind crush is part of something you need in the deck um also have your waking the dragon here inside which causes your extra deck i know it's cut off on the screen a little bit um but yeah you've got your it's a dragoon um there it is let me move that up there you go it's dragoon cyber blader uh, blah, 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 blah. Two Joker, Ojama King, and Cyber and Dragon. Very cool. Interesting. Yes, Millennium I literally should have won that game, but yeah, yeah, of course, best deck. So, last thing to do is to look at the breakdown. So, this is my terrible attempt at art. And um, we're just going to talk about this before before we go. So, that's the pie chart on, on the left is what you see the, the top cut decks. Right, so so the Jinzo and the Moth are big because there's two Jin, two, two spellproof armor, and two Moth decks. Um, you've got your Relinquished, Flaming Raging Flaming Raid Sprite, yes, Flaming Raid Sprite direct attack deck. Uh, the Mind Crush Millennium Eye deck and the Unions at the bottom taking up one spot each. And then you've got your Bar Graph of everything else of every single deck that entered the full tournament, all 72 decks. And obviously Moth had the most representation. So Moth, you can see, had 11 decks entered and two top, right? Um, Cyber Angel, Ancient Year, and Burn had actually eight or seven decks entered with zero tops. So did everybody overrate Burn in this first few weeks of the format? And is Burn actually not that good? I don't know. And as for Cyber Angel, same thing. Is it overrated? And is it actually not that good? I'm not sure. Is it just a mind crush everybody's playing, either in main deck or side deck, that kills it? Um, Ancient Gear is just copium. I'm sorry. I'm not. I don't. I don't even know what else to say about that. Um, spellproof. We had six entries and two tops, so that's pretty good for spellproof. And I will say, for spellproof, the reason for that is actually that it has very good matchups against um, both Burn and Moth. So, 18 decks here are actually, because you have the 7 burn decks and the 11 moth decks, Spellproof actually does really good against those. So, that's probably a reason why Spellproof performs so well. Um, other than that, I think Spellproof also does really good against the direct attack decks. Um, so, there's that too. Um, there's also Unions, which we had 4 of with 1 top. How many of the Ancient Gears were SPA? I think either six or seven or of them. Oh, I think, no, almost all of them were. I don't think I saw any middle Age Max. I think almost all the Ancient Gears were, um, except one, you're right. I think Rook played middle Age Max because, you know, it's Rook. But other than that, I think they were all SPA. So, uh, yeah, that's that. So back to Unions, again, 25% uh, top rate. I think Unions is still a really good deck that's just not seeing as much representation so i would honestly still put it in a very solid tier two spot as we saw it's a really good deck that only lost to waking the dragon literally um and kaiku i guess right and then you have volcanic which saw four entries and zero tops volcanic is not a good deck stop coping we saw Raging Cat, which is the direct attack deck. I call it Raging Cat because the one that did top actually played Amethyst Cat. And the two other ones that didn't top actually did not play Amethyst Cat. So, uh, by the way, Injustice can confirm this if you are watching. If you're not, that's fine. You don't need to. Playing Amethyst Cat in this deck was my idea. So, yes, I am actually a god. Curse of Can attests to that Terra Master is a deck building god. Uh, so yeah, Raging Cat is good if you play it with the cat. So yeah, use the cat. Uh, Ratbox had three entries, zero tops. So for Lucas telling everybody to give Ratbox some respect, I'm going to say no. And we have Dragoon. 
it's a dragoon which sadly saw three entries and zero tops and then the bar for one in the bar graph the bar was so small i literally could not fit the name relinquished onto that bar so i just i just i just put relinquished's face on there since it made it all the way to the finals and potentially got first place i i have to I have to have the relinquished there, right? Um, so notable things from the other 18 was there was like two Crystal Beast decks. So, you know, just just something else to, to know that Crystal Beast, something we actually thought was going to be a halfway decent deck, actually got basically no representation. So that feels pretty bad. So, uh, you know, maybe play Crystal Beast next time if you were on some garbage like Ratbox or Volcanic, which are bad decks. So yeah, maybe try Crystal Beast. How about that? So yeah, that's kind of all the decks I thought were worth mentioning. Um, obviously, this is going to be up on YouTube, and I'll go ahead and post this breakdown in the thing, in the, the Winnebox channel, I guess, somewhere. But uh, yeah, this is my attempt at making a, a, a pie chart and a bar graph. So um, I hope you enjoyed today's session of Terra Master Attempts Art. But yeah. Back to me and Dueling Book. Hi. But yeah, that's it. That's the stream. Solid, a little bit over an hour. So we're going to do this for every winner box. But uh, for the VOD and for the stream, thanks everyone for coming out. Thank you for watching. And if you've made it this far into the VOD, actually, I love you. So uh, yeah, that's it. I will see you guys next time I stream. Until then, Terra Master, out.